What's good, people? This is Brian Mazik, a.k.a. Franchise Play, talking some Mutt 16 right now. Salary cap rank beta has really grabbed me with this mode. Wasn't really into it that much at first. I'm late to it, like a lot of, you know, unlike a lot of people. But this salary cap rank got me digging into mudhead.com like crazy, just doing searches for lineups. And so I spent the last two, two and a half days trying to find out what is the best possible ground and pound lineup that you can pick right so here's the thing now obviously i could have just said well who's got 99 overalls at every position and said hey this is the best ground and pound lineup but that's not really true because what about defense you got to be able to feel the defense it doesn't have anything to do with ground and pound offense but obviously if you're going to make this lineup you got to have a defense too so i'm not going to talk about defense in this video but what i am going to tell you is this never spend more than 470 to 475 points on offense or defense in totality because you got to leave room for the other side of the ball and a little bit of space for your kicker punter whatever and then you don't spend a lot on flex players in my opinion you got guys on mudhead.com you can find that whose salaries are as low as five grab those guys up for your flex positions and just put it into put the rest of it into your core positions but that's neither here nor there let's talk about this lineup that i have right now in front of you First and foremost, for me personally, the most important aspect of this particular of a ground and pound offense starts at that offensive line, right? Now, this offensive line that you're looking at right now, you might be looking at like, wait here, yeah, you got three, you got four elites there, and a goal. So that makes sense. But it's deeper than just grabbing the elites, right? Because this is salary cap ranked, and you got to observe that salary. And you got to say, all right, what style of game do I want to play? And we're saying we want to go ground and pound. So for me, the offensive line is the most important, and their run blocking skill is the most important. So if you look at this, even the, even the starting tight end that you see right now, right? None of these players have a run block rating, including the tight end of Lord in 88. The lowest rating on run blocking for... These six guys there at the top of your screen is Doug Freeze 88 on run blocking. Larry Allen's a 99. Uh, Jason Kelsey's a 92. Mike Uopati's a 90. And Jason Peters is a 93. And Jared Cook is even an 89 in run, in, in run blocking. And he's not a bad receiver either, which helps, obviously, because you're not going to run the ball every single down. But he can get it done in that way as well. Now, you might be looking at that second tight end, Thomas Gafford. We're going to show him in a second. Thomas Gafford's run block rating is also, I believe it's an 83. So, that whole, the whole line is going to be stacked when it comes to the run block option. And you look at some of the ratings on these guys, you know that the pass blocking is not horrible either. So, when you do have to pass, you don't have to worry about being left completely out there. But those guys up front play to the strength of, that, of this particular scheme. Next, let's talk about wide receivers. You see that Herman Moore right there, right? That Legends Elite Herman Moore is only an 83 overall. And even crazier, look at that low salary amount for Herman Moore. Well, in case you didn't know, that Herman Moore card there has the highest rating on run blocking for any wide receiver in Mutt. Period. That Herman Moore card has an 85 run block. What does that mean? Sweeps all day, babies. Tosses all day. I mean, obviously, it can be stopped. You know, you see somebody slant or, or overloading one side of the line of scrimmage on defense. I don't care if you got Herman Moore there or not. You probably don't want to keep running to that side. But when you do have a straight up situation where you, it's an advantageous for you to run a toss or a sweep to that to that direction. If Herman Moore is over there, you're, gonna, you're not going to get a wide receiver that can block better than him in the run. Let's switch sides. Michael Floyd. Michael Floyd's blocking at a 67, which is absolutely above average for wide receivers. Even in the slot, Jason Avant is also a good blocking wide receiver. Now, like I said, you're not going to run the ball every time. So what do you want? You want guys with sure hands. Obviously, you know Herman Moore down the field is an absolute threat on the deep passes. Michael Floyd has a very similar skill set, but I want to talk specifically about Jason Avant. Let's go real life football for a second. Do you know that in 2012, right, Jason Avant 
was the only player in the NFL with 40 or more targets and catches who did not have a drop for the entire season. That's real deal information, right? He was at it again in 2015. He didn't have as many targets and targets and catches. I think it was 15 catches and 24 targets, but he again did not have a drop. But his catch ratings are extremely high, so he is a sure-handed guy who is also a pretty decent blocker. So there you have that. And run to the outsides because you got your you got your offensive line there. You got your two tackles. You got your two tight ends as well, and then you got two wide receivers that can block as well. So if, say you want to do I formation. Well, James Devlin is a devil of a blocker coming out of that backfield as a lead blocking fullback. His run block is an 89. This dude gets after it in, as, as your lead blocker. So he's going to get it done. Say you want to run the read option. Well, you're not going to find very many quarterbacks at all on Mutt who, better, who are better for that than Marcus Mariota. Yes, he's only got a 76 and yes, there's only a 50 salary cap hit for him. But you don't have to go elite on every situation, and Marcus Mariota is an op is definitely an option for that. His throw, his his throwing accuracy, short and mid, is solid. Now his deep throw accuracy is a little shaky. It's only a 71, and you're obviously gonna probably want to try to go down the field here and there, because uh, if you run the ball as effectively as it appears you're gonna be able to run it, then at that point, then you know they're gonna have some times where. Defenses are stacking a box and you need to be able to make them pay over the top. I still believe Mario can do that, especially with wide receivers like Floyd and Herman Moore. Not to mention the whole thing about running the read option or him just scrambling, period, only adds to that run game. Last but certainly not least, the running back. This Derrick Henry, the, this, the, the, the draft class elite version, is a 94 overall. Derrick Henry is a beast. Over 90 in speed, acceleration, uh, trucking, it's its all there. It's all there for Derrick Henry. And if you put him with his ability, with, his, with the combination of speed that he has on this card and the trucking that he has on this card, and you put him behind that line, you got the best ground and pound offense that you can find. I'm about to go on a journey right now to put this lineup in motion, and I'm going to have you guys see how my team does. But I hope this was helpful. I hope this is something that you guys may want to look at doing yourselves, potentially. I appreciate you watching. God bless. Peace.